Hello and welcome back. Today we're going to be going over putting in a first person controller. We're also going to be setting up a couple settings that are required for the project. And then also we're going to go ahead and throw in some arms that I created in Blender outside of the video. Mind you, on that note, I do want to explicitly state that any assets that I create for this project will not be directly shown how to do so. It will not be a tutorial on working in Blender or anything like that. I will only be going over how I do the code and the implementation. So with that out of the way, we are going to go ahead and set up a couple things. So we have our player body here and it, all it is is just a simple character body 3D. And we have a little bit of a scene here and I kind of based it off that concept I drew previously, but obviously very blockly just using CSG objects and some basic lighting. Then on the player body, I went ahead and implemented a collision shape 3D and a camera 3D with the camera being up higher. So let's go ahead and throw in the character's arms. And to do that, we are gonna go over here to the arms prefab, which all it really is, is just creating an inherited object of the arms mesh. And then within here, we do have an animation player and an animation tree. I am gonna go ahead and go over how to do the animation tree in very simple terms. It's not a complicated animation tree. So all we're going to need is first, we're going to need the animation for idle while lowered. And this is just going to be at a resting position. And then we're also going to need the animation for when it is raised and idled and the transition between the two. Then we will need the firing while lowered and firing while raised, as in aiming. And finally, we're going to need the reloading animation. Now, a note on how I'm doing the states, I am going to go ahead and anytime you have it aimed and you hit reload, it will finish that reload animation and send it to the lowered state, just so we don't have to worry about transitioning back from reloaded and it's just automatic. So we're going to go ahead and throw in some transitions here. Nothing too complicated and nothing you haven't seen before, so I'm just going to speed through that real quick. Now a couple of notes on the transitions here. The transition specifically from the idle raise to the reloading, I did it a little bit longer as the distance between the beginning of that animation and the idle raised is a pretty significant jump and I don't wanna just snap to it, I wanna blend. And then also between the idle raise and idle lower to their respective firing states, I went ahead and made that transition time very short. That way we go directly into fire. And if we go ahead and go to the animation tree and select it as active, we should see it in idle lowered. And if we switch to idle raised, you'll see the animation going to raised and back again. Same with firing on either one of them. And same thing with reloading. Everything just works flawlessly and it ends up in idle lowered. So we're good on that. So now that we have that, we can go ahead and save the arms prefab and let's just leave it that as is. We'll hop back over to the player body and we'll just drag that in as a child of the player body. Now we are going to set the transform on the Y axis to 0.5. This just centers it on the camera. And if we hit preview on the camera, we can go ahead and see it in the bottom right corner. Not exactly very high. I would actually like it to be higher up, but I need to modify the animation for that. And I'll worry about that later. So now that we have the arms in game, we can go ahead and worry about the script. So we're just going to select the player body here and we're going to go ahead and create a new script. We're just going to call this player body controller and we're going to throw that into the code folder. And we're also going to go ahead and leave it on the basic movement as we can use this to start. Now, a couple notes on this. I went ahead and went up to editor settings and set the .NET editor to Visual Studio. So you'll need to set this to whatever you want to use, whatever your preference is. I personally prefer Visual Studio, but to each their own. So now that I have that set, I will also note that I went over to the input map and created a couple new inputs. The built-in actions can suffice for this, but for the time being, I wanted some clearly labeled and simple movements and aiming and jumping and firing and reloading, as well as an escape key for enabling or disabling the cursor. I may add later, but I didn't want to mess with the built-in actions, despite the fact that you can't actually change them. So we're going to go ahead and hop into code and we'll get that started. So first off, we're going to speed through a couple of variables here. We need an animation tree and a hand state machine playback path, as well as an idle animation name, an aiming animation name, an idle fire animation name, aiming fire animation, and of course a reload animation name. 
we're also going to need two node 3ds one is going to be the camera node and the and the other is going to be the arms container node. and then we're also going to need a couple of floats rotation speed actual camera rotation speed and then arms actual rotation speed as well as a vertical rotation limit and that's just going to be 80. and then we will make the speed and jump velocity of course public exports and we are going to need a couple of private variables. First, we're going to need to cache that animation node state ma machine playback. And that's going to be the hand state machine playback, as well as a vector three for the target rotation and a Boolean for whether it is aiming or not. Now we're going to go ahead and override the ready function. And first all, we're just going to go ahead and set the input dot mouse mode to input dot mouse mode enum dot captured. And this is just going to lock in the mouse, which will later be able to toggle in an input override. Next up, we're going to need the hand state machine playback, and we're going to get that from the animation tree, casting it to animation node state machine playback. You can also use as animation node state machine playback. Either way works. I just do it this bit way because this is the way I was taught. And we're just going to use the hand state machine playback path as the path for that. That way we can change it in the editor and change it to whatever it needs to be changed to. Next up, we're going to go ahead and override input. And first is going to be what you've already seen before, which is just going to be taking in the mouse rotation. So we're going to say if invent is input event mouse motion, and we're going to cast that to mouse motion, a new object. Then we're going to go ahead and capture that as a target rotation equals a new vector three. With the X being mathf.clamp, and then in parentheses and another parentheses, we're going to do negative one, so we're just going to invert it, the mouse motion dot relative dot Y, and we're going to multiply that by rotation speed. And then we're going to add that to whatever the result of that equation is, target rotation dot X. Now, I actually messed this up and I have to go back again later, but I, it is supposed to be target rotation dot x and we're going to clamp that between the negative vertical rotation limit and the positive vertical rotation limit this is just going to make sure we can't rotate entirely inverted backwards or forwards now for the y we're going to go ahead and do mathf dot wrap and we're going to do almost the same thing but this time we're going to use mouse motion dot relative dot x and we're going to add to it the target rotation dot y and then we're wrapping between the zero and the 360 degrees. This is just going to make sure that as you rotate around 360 degrees, we don't have any sort of random jumping or errors like that. And then for the Z, we're just going to put in zero because that should never change. That's your role. And we're not doing a six degrees of freedom or anything like that. So we're just going to leave that. Next up, we're going to check for a couple of action press. So the first one is going to be event dot is action pressed escape. And this is just going to be able to toggle the mouse mode, which we are going to go ahead and need to make a private void for for uh, function. So let's go ahead and make that. So we're just going to call it private void toggle mouse mode. And within it, it's going to be pretty simple. We're just going to see if input dot mouse mode is currently input dot mouse mode enum dot visible. And if it is not, then we're going to make it visible. And if it is already visible, we're just going to make it captured. And we're going to call that inside of the is action pressed if statement up there. And that's simple enough. Now down here, we are going to need to go ahead and make a couple more of these. We're going to need the aim function as well as when the aim function is released. And then we're also going to need the fire and reload function. So this is going to be most of our inputs. We may have to add more things later here, but for now this will work. So we're going to set the second aim one to is action released instead of is action pressed. So for the first is action pressed aim, we're just going to set is aiming to true. And then on release, we're going to set that to false. So that way you have to hold it down to aim. And then the hand stay machine playback dot travel function will be used to travel to the aiming animation name. This will just be the state of aiming. And then we're going to travel back to the idle animation name for the on release. 
Following this, we are going to need to do something slightly different for the fire function, so we're going to check to see if we're aiming, and if we are, we're going to travel to the aiming fire animation name, and if we're not aiming, we're going to travel to the idle fire animation name. We're going to handle actually firing the bullets via events that will be played from the animation, so we're not going to worry about any of that right now. Then on reload, we're going to set animation aiming to false, and we're going to travel to the reload animation. Now we do need to go down here to the physics function with a couple of changes. We're going to clean things up a little bit, and we're going to set the is action pressed on UI except for the jump key to just jump because now we actually have a proper one for that then we're also going to set the input dot get vector for the movement direction to move left move right move up and move down as opposed to ui left ui right ui up and down Following this, we are going to need to go ahead and make the input be based off of the camera's rotation, as the camera is now rotating, not the actual body of the character. So we're going to, instead of be multiplying that by the transform.basis, we're going to multiply that by the camera node.transform.basis. Besides that, everything else is pretty much the same. However, down below move and slide, we do need to put in a couple new function calls. So we need to set the camera node.rotation to a new vector3, and I've already done this in previous tutorials as well, but it's pretty simple. Starting with X, we're going to set mathf.lerp angle, and we're going to lerp the camera node.rotation.x to mathf.degrees to radians, and set that to target rotation.x. And then we're going to rotate that by camera actual rotation rotation speed multiplied by delta. And then we're just going to do the exact same thing for the Y variable. So this will be the camera node.rotation.y rotating it to the target rotation.y degrees to radian using the mathf dot function. And then of course z can just be zero. Following this, we are going to do the exact same thing to the arms with a subtle difference that is going to make things a little bit more reactive and a little bit more enjoyable so we are going to rotate the arms but we're going to do it by arms actual rotation speed and of course rotating the arms no dot rotation the reason why we're doing this is because i want the arms to lag behind the camera a little bit that way we feel a bit more weighty we feel like a person moving through an environment as opposed to just well the doom guy essentially and that should be about it. So we're back in Godot. We can go ahead and drag in a couple things. We do need to make the editable children option selected for arms rig. That way we can access the animation tree. And we'll just go ahead and select the animation tree under the assign. And then we are going to need a couple names here. So we'll go ahead and pull in the playback. And then the other ones, we're just going to name them as they were named in the animation tree. That's idle lowered, idle raised, firing lowered one, and firing raised one, and then also reloading. So we're going to go ahead and drag in also the camera node, and the arms node is a little bit more finicky. So we do need to go ahead and create a child node, which is the container of the arms. So we're just going to make this a node 3D, we're going to put it as child of the camera node, and we're just going to go ahead and reset its position. That way it's in the exact same location. And this is going to be arms container. This way, we can go ahead and have the arms container rotate, and if the arms mesh need to be adjusted slightly, say forward or backwards, that'll just go ahead and rotate it automatically exactly the way it should be. So we go ahead and use that as the pivot point, and we select the arms container as the arms node. Now, the rotation variables are up to whatever you like. I did end up settling on a couple that I liked with 0.3, 20, 12, and 80, as well as 5 and 4.5 of the jump velocity. I just left those what they were defaulted to. The vertical rotation limit, once again, you can limit it. Some, I didn't want to limit it too much, as when it comes to first-person shooters, I do like having mostly freedom of movement. Now, I did want to go ahead and make the arms actually drift a little bit behind, and so I did make them slightly slower. If you want them to be a little bit faster, or perhaps even faster than the camera so that they rotate before the camera, you just change that variable then rotation speed is your actual mouse instead. So let's go ahead and save that and see what happens when we hit play. So now, okay, we've definitely got some sort of problem. Let's go ahead and check our inputs. 
All right, so right there we're adding the target rotation y to the x, and that's obviously not the way we want it. So we'll go ahead and set that to x, and then the mouse relative is y because that's up and down. And All right, and we're good to go. So if we go ahead and hit escape, we can get our mouse back. And if we look around, we've got some basic movement, uh, aiming, as well as shooting, either from that position or that position. And if we press reload, we'll go ahead and play the animation. And we're pretty much good to go. I think that that's good enough for the time being. We'll just leave it as is. And next week, we'll come back and be working on a couple things having to do with actual shooting. I'm going to leave this here. Now, I will say probably the keen eyed among you will have noticed there's no actual bullets in the hand since I wanted to handle that based off of code and not animation. So that way we can have the bullets actually instantiated as well as the speed reloader that we're using to load the revolver. We need all of that instantiated via code. That way we can go ahead and kick them out via physics when the gun pops up like that. So we'll just leave that there for now. We're going to come back here next episode with the actual shooting mechanics as well as spawning a particle effect and then also then later on we're actually going to get to the meat of this series which is going to be the enemies and so i've been i've been kind of touching base with how i want those enemies to look and you can see that on screen now i'm not really sure if i'm pleased with it yet but i do kind of like the idea of it being a kind of lovecraftian cult but leaning towards perhaps worship of the moon and we'll see how that goes but as always thank you all and have a wonderful week and we'll see you all back here next week for the next episode